Hey folks, welcome back to another video. And if you are looking for an allocation for a GR Corolla, and you're also kind of worried about spending that kind of cash plus a little bit of ADM, well, you might want to hang on a second because behind me, I have a 2024 Buick Encore GX Sport Touring. And besides the fact that it's a pretty handsome looking vehicle, uh, it shares some really interesting attributes with that GR Corolla. For example, they're both three cylinder turbos and they're both all wheel drive. The main difference is this is a nine speed automatic. For some people that's good, for some people that's not. But if you prefer an automatic for everyday use, this might be something interesting to take a look at, especially when you see the value at the end of this video. So stick around, we're gonna look at the details, we're gonna look at uh, how it behaves on the road, and I'm gonna give you my opinion at the end because I've owned a GR Corolla myself. All that's coming up right now. So here we are in the GX's interior and just right away, a couple things to note, which is it's a new car, I get it, but it is, it's really overpowering is that this GM leather smell <laughs> that just kind of hits you when you get in. Uh, and why wouldn't it? Because there's leather everywhere in here. So you have leather on the seats, you have leather on the shift boot, on the door cards and on the steering wheel. The steering wheel itself is actually a pretty nice shape. It's flat bottom, which typically I don't like, but in this car, I think it works okay. Um, I do like the diameter and the cutouts for your thumbs here. It makes for a really nice sporty, uh, not just looking wheel, but feeling wheel. I do like the uh, logo for Buick these days now, which is the three shields, which actually kind of looks like three daggers, but um, I think it works for them really nice. You have two digital screens here uh, in one assembly. So kind of to fool you to thinking it's one, but it's really just two. Uh, which actually I do like that it's nice and low and out of your way so it's not intrusive when you're driving but it does have this little nipple that sticks out which is your power and volume knob which to me kind of feels like a miss I it, it looks out of place and sometimes it hides behind the steering wheel when I'm driving I would have wished it to be like maybe right here or something like that but it is what it is um, I do like that the HVAC unit here is still push button and dials. That's always the easiest way to have easy access to stuff like that. And the AC in this works really, really well. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's a pretty standard interior. This one does have the panoramic roof option, which is uh, great. I think it's just uh, under 1500 bucks, which, you know, if it's for you, great. I personally don't like having a lot of weight above me. I like you know, every vehicle to be sort of sporty and that means having less weight or weight in the right places. So, but it is a nice uh, panoramic roof. And then you have all the typical features that new cars come with these days in terms of safety features. You got uh, auto high beams, you have, you know, lane change assist and auto braking and all that great stuff, just standard, which is great. Uh, and two cup holders, which, you know, I mean, you can never have enough cup holders here. So that's great to see. But other than that, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty nice place to be. So right out the gate driving the Encore GX, I noticed a couple of things, which is the first thing is it feels really light on its feet. Um, I think that's a big surprise. I wasn't really expecting that. I, I just kind of assume things are heavy these days, uh, but you know, this feels pretty um, on its tippy toes, uh, just driving around. Uh, it feels agile. Um, 
I believe the weight on this thing is actually right under 3,300 pounds. So that actually gives it a pretty good advantage when it comes to performance. But you know, you, you remove a lot of that performance with stuff like this sunroof because you know, you're putting weight up high and that's not what you want for, you know, fun driving. But even with that, this does feel pretty good. And yeah, sure it's a new car, but everything in this car feels really well screwed together. Uh, it feels buttoned down really nicely and it just gives you a sense of good quality, especially at the price point. Now, you know, the suspension has sort of an interesting uh, dual personality in the sense that right now I'm pushing it through some corners and where just driving around town it felt like it was kind of stiff but compliant. Here it feels kind of soft and not capable. I mean there's a lot of body roll just instantly so it's almost like the suspension kind of tricks you into thinking it's more sporty than it is until you start throwing it into a corner and then you realize, no, it's it's not sporty at all. Um, but, you know, it manages okay. It's just not something that's going to blow your mind. Now, on top of that, the way this car um, delivers power, right? And I'm not talking about, you know, the engine part. I'm talking about the transmission part. I've noticed that going around a corner, if I'm on the throttle in all wheel drive mode, which is what I'm in now, there's quite a bit of a lag that happens from the pedal to the wheels. Like it's a, it's a big lag. Like watch foot down. There it goes. It, it like, it just takes a, a pretty long moment to decide what you're trying to do almost like it's like not sure if you're right or wrong and it wants to you know make the call for you but it holds back power and it i don't know maybe that goes away if i turn off the traction control and and all that but i'm not going to do that um you know just for daily driving i want this thing to feel fun you know i want everything that we drive to be something interesting something that you want to be in and you know for most people this is exactly what they need something that's you know, more or less, um, you know, efficient, practical, decent looking, um, fast enough and on fast enough. Let me give you the numbers. This has a 1.3 liter three cylinder turbo that makes 155 horsepower and produces 176 foot pounds of torque. That's not a lot, but it's a lot for the size of engine, I guess. Um, and so, you know, the horsepower, not a big number. The way this thing delivers power to the wheels, not very well. But again, for the average driver, they're not going to notice any of this stuff. They're just going to get in and drive it and enjoy it. So for that person, this is great. So the steering on this car, you know, you won't notice it driving around town. But here driving on this windy road that's a little bumpy, you realize how slow the rack really is. And uh, I mean, not a huge surprise. I mean, this is not, again, not a performance car, but you know, I, I am a little surprised because I was expecting it to be maybe just a snidge more fun just because the trim level is a ST or Sport Touring name kind of suggests that you can expect it to be a little bit more fun. It's okay. Not bad. It's got a little, a little thrust. I mean, thrust might not be the right word, but it moves. Okay. Actually, the big surprise is really the brakes. These brake rotors are not very big, but the way that this car bites on those little rotors is impressive. I mean, you step on it and this thing just goes, bam, right to a stop. It's, it's pretty impressive. And I think a lot of that comes down to traction control tuning and ABS tuning, but it's really good. So I think from a safety systems perspective, this is a really great vehicle. Um, makes me feel like if anything were to jump out in front of the car, I've got a real good chance of not hitting it. You know, I, I might be a little bit rough on it in terms of 
criticism for cornering because on some of these corners, it, it's actually starting to like make sense. The more I drive it, the more I'm starting to understand how to get it to corner and yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not gonna be a GR roll up, but it, it does an okay job. Ooh, yeah, around this corner right there, see? Yeah, like once you start to understand it, oh yeah, there it is. Woo, okay. <laughs> I think, yeah, so, <laughs> so around those corners, yeah, the suspension wasn't happy, but this car does uh, still use its all-wheel drive uh, to pull you out. You just have to be a little bit more um, kind of intentional with it if you're going to drive it fast, like grab it by the scruff, and then it sort of complies. So that's good. All right, so that is our drive in the Encore GX. And truth be told, no, not a sports car, not a GR Corolla replacement. But what this is is a fantastic daily driver no matter where you live in the country because this can help tackle rain, mud, snow, whatever. If you have a long commute, you have a short commute. This does it. If you want a hybrid, well, okay, you're out of luck because it's not a hybrid, but at about 27 combined miles per gallon, this is not a bad place to start in terms of something that's practical and efficient. They call this a mini SUV. It's really not. It, it's more of a lukewarm hatchback that's lifted a little bit. But that's okay because I don't think it's trying to be anything else than it is. It's just a really practical, nice car that drives relatively well. Now, the only qualm I had about the drive is the transmission. Sure, it's a nine-speed automatic, which I think is geared really more towards efficiency, but you know, what's annoying is the performance driver in me loves going around a corner with all-wheel drive foot on the floor and really experiencing the grip pulling you around that corner. <laughs> that's not what this does. Matter of fact, you, you, you push the gas or the throttle in that situation and this transmission just takes a coffee break. It just tries to figure out, I just need to understand what you want right there. And I'll come back to you when I have my feelings sorted. <laughs> so yeah, not, not a sporty feel. But look, at $34,000 price as tested, which by the way, the base of this car is about 28 grand and some change, with no markup by the way, you can just buy this car at a sticker price. This is a lot of car for the money for those people who just want a nice vehicle, nice place to be, practical, has great uh, functionality, features, uh, safety, and maybe a small family, like fits all those check boxes, you know, just fills that whole form up. But from a performance standpoint, you're gonna want more. So, you know, that's the trade-off. This is a great daily runner. It's not a Canyon Carver, and that's what it is. But all that being said, guys, if you've watched to this point, I wanna thank you. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. As always, I appreciate you watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.